It is a gorgeous Friday night in Baltimore, Maryland for the 93rd meeting between Navy and Johns Hopkins, historical rivals. Hopkins at five and two, coming off a loss to Syracuse. This is their last non-conference test. The Naval Academy sits at three and three. This game is starting 30 minutes late. Navy pulled out of the Academy in Annapolis and a car hit their bus. The second bus showed up and on I-97, all of a sudden the bus starts smoking and that bus did not make it here. They had to send a third bus and that's why we're starting late. What kind of impact is that gonna have? Well, I've never heard of this before. So it's a bit unusual, but I think just having a 30 minute delay won't be that big of a uh, result for both these teams. They had a proper warm up, so I don't think we'll see too much impact. Yeah, no, no one was injured. There's no casualties or, or anything uh, in that regard, just a timing difference. For Johns Hopkins, Garrett Degnan looks to etch his name into the record books. A goal tonight would be his 38th straight game with a goal. He right now is tied with Ryan Brown and Terry Reard. Just an amazing goal scorer. You give him time and room, he will release the shot. Takes the bulk of shots for this Hopkins offense. Last week against Syracuse, had 14 shots, scored five goals. Usually from the outside, he's a huge threat with the lefty shot, but he also showcased his dodging abilities. Got to cage with a great score here. But he's a huge leader for this Hopkins team and really a threat on EMO. Degnan's got heat from the outside. Meanwhile, for Navy, uh, Xavier Arline, two-sport athlete. He's a quarterback of the football team, and he's their trigger man, their, their ex-attackman behind the net. A really impressive athlete out there. Did not score in the Lehigh loss for Navy, but look for him. He needs to have more dodging ability that Coach tells us about. And also, he needs to really operate from different spots. He often operates from behind the cage. Look for him to operate from up top tonight. He's got elite separation quickness and a burst from behind the net. Well, we're ready to start things out. Joe C. Slack, Charles Barber, and Jeffrey George are our officials. Navy's faceoff man is Zach Hayashi. 60% on the season, the freshman from nearby McDonough School. And Tyler Dunn gets the start for Johns Hopkins as Hayashi, 20 in blue, wins it with ease. Navy's been inconsistent this season. A couple nice wins over Hofstra. Their best game of the year was a win over BU as a flag is dropped. Starting attack tonight, Xavier Arline, Tommy Ho Hovivian, and Henry Tolker. 24 is Arline. He's got great speed, good vision, excellent wheels. Behind the net to Mac Haley. He'll set up a single invert. Arline eyes the defense. Up top for Dane Swanson, senior number 28, near side for Max Hewitt. He too a senior from Kent Denver. Navy showing a lot of patience. Hopkins in their man-to-man -man set. Bounce shot, Erlin makes the first save of the game and the penalty is whistled dead. Very patient set. Offside, 30. White, 7, 7. Offside, 30. 77. Hopkins offside off that initial face-off as Charles Barber makes the call. There you see Chase Erlin having himself quite a season. He's at 55%. Thought he was real strong last week. Navy struggling left side of your screen. You see how they're struggling with the extra man. Just four of 18 for their opportunities on the season. They bring Will Schiffenhaus into the game. This is Henry Tolker from the left wing. He bobbles the ball and it's loose on the carpet. That's what a great pickup. Our line with the scoop and miss and backup credited to the goalie, Chase Erland, the graduate transfer from Cornell. Heads up play for Erland. He's been so impressive in the leadership that he brings to this Hopkins team. But Navy, you know, when, when I watched a lot of their games from this season, they had a lot of unforced errors, especially on the offensive end, just throwing the ball around. Need to make sure they take care of it. Navy's defense has been solid. They actually played a decent defensive game against Penn State. Hopkins now with their initial possession. We were told that 
there'll be a little switch. Dylan Bauer may start an attack, and Russell Melendez will play out of the midfield, and that's, in, in fact, what we see. Jacob Angelus inside. Degnan, and there it is. Garrett Degnan has just set a Johns Hopkins school record. He has scored in his 38th consecutive game. What a remarkable accomplishment. Tied with the great Terry Reardon and Ryan Brown with 37 goals. He owns it now at 38. Angeles, he is the assist man and gets it to Dagnon, takes that on the run and shoots. That game ball is special. Terry Reardon, an outstanding player here. He and uh, Brian Pacola teamed up for a very prolific Hopkins offense coached by Tony Seaman. Ryan Brown, a longtime shooter in the PLL and for Team USA. And Degnan now on top of that list. Graduate student from DeMatha. Dad George, a former Air Force pilot. Two-time captain. Known for his steadiness. His ability to show up every day with the, the same even keel. Low maintenance. High production, Garrett Degnan. And Coach Milliman could not talk more glowingly about him, just what he brings to the team, how he relates to the younger guys, his leadership. Hopkins offense, which was very good last week, even that loss to Syracuse. Remember, Hopkins had 10 fewer possessions than the Orange. So their offensive efficiency in this motion offense, it's a, a positionless scheme, has been quite good. Chauvet! Stings the corner on the rollback. The freshman's 10th goal of the season. He had hat tricks against Towson and he had a hat trick against Denver. 10th goal of the season. Start the season so strong with back to back hat tricks in the first two games. You just give him space and the ability, he can just stand his feet and rip it. Love the placement of that shot. And Hopkins off to a very strong start. Two goals in 46 seconds. Hunter Shaw, that from Lawrenceville. As you look at his bio on the left, Lawrenceville in Baltimore this weekend playing some local teams. They're playing Calvert Hall this afternoon. But Shaw, that shot, he's got that quick release. I love the setup, she and the way he drove right-handed as, as the bait, so to speak. And then turns left-handed to set up his strength. Quinton Kilrain, top of the box, near side. Angelus surveys the field to the far side. No advantage, and so now Hopkins will settle. I thought Kilrain was going to take a look at Cage and rip that. Kilrain will play wings on the faceoffs. He'll also start at close defense now. The freshman, he too from Lawrenceville. Matt Collison left-handed, nice stop by Dan Daly, Navy sophomore goalie. Long outlet over the head of Jackson Bonnets, but Arlene's got it. Navy with the extra man break, and they capitalize. So the overthrow to Bonnets, and somehow number eight in blue kept this ball alive for his teammates. Vivian with his third goal of the season. Great quick strike. That clear did not look like it was going in the, the right direction. Or move. Watch this save. Daly with the clear right up the middle. And did not look like the bounce was going their way. Excellent job. Arline, his head's up. Look how quickly he moves. Got to honor him running down the center of the field. Excellent pass. Havivian keeps it simple, overhanded. And the Dallas Texas native gives Navy their first goal. You know, interesting, Dan Daly, watching him on tape, I like him. Lefty, Navy's goalie from Wayne, New Jersey. He's been struggling with his passing, though, and, he, and he's had to break in some new sticks. In fact, last week against Lehigh, threw two or three passes 
into the ground, bounce passes. And we saw him in warm-up, Sheehan, working on his long passes quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, like, he was standing at, like, the midfield line, just throwing it down, feet were set, not moving, working on his pass. Went through three sticks last week, two of his own, a backup stick of another keeper. Broken into some new sticks this week. Our line tied up well by Zulik, who kicks the ball. Check that, there's Patrick Deans, and the ball goes out of bounds. So this will be Navy's ball. Shot clock stays at 43. Basically at the midway point of this 2024 season. This is Hopkins' last non-league game. They start Big East play, big, excuse me, Big Ten play on Sunday at Rutgers. Navy dives into the Patriot League after this contest. Swanson kick saved by Erlin out to the midfield line. Bonnets gets there first. Loose ball, good hit by Raposo, and he finds a teammate. And Avilas dishes that forward to Degnan. So Hopkins now will substitute on the, out of the box. You'll see Brendan Grimes, Jimmy Ayers, and freshman Hunter Chauvet. Navy goalie Dan Daly, lower left side of your screen, 52%. Sophomore, the lefty from Wayne, New Jersey. Chauvet to X. Bauer. Andrew, a lot of circular passing from Hopkins. You see ball movement, you'll see people movement. Lefty wing shot catches daily napping, and Chauvet, who is not shy, scores his second of this contest. The Hopkins offense is a thing of beauty when working just people moving, the passes are crisp, the ball doesn't get stuck in anyone's stick. And Chauvet, the freshman, gets his second goal of the day, comes around the left-hand side, love the bouncer. He could be a threat up top with the outside shooting. This one, he takes it on the run, little sidearm. Great placement. Sliver of an angle. Head coach Pete Milliman likes it, his fourth year. Coming off that loss in Charlotte, North Carolina to Syracuse. Hopkins had one five straight after a seasoning opening setback to Denver. A bizarre and wacky game. Hopkins really controlled throughout and somehow the last four minutes unraveled. But they learned lessons from that loss and played well. It's a very, very good Hopkins team right now. Fairly ranked anywhere from six to 10 in what's been a an early season defined really by chaos. Everybody's taking some shots other than Army. Cadets sit at number one in the poll. Jack Flaherty, tall midi out of Chaminade, Long Island, the 6'6 sophomore, left-handed. Ball's deflected past the midfield line. Nice scoop by Ian McGollum, but Navy goes off sides. So restart now for Hopkins. Navy retreats, no numbers advantage. Hopkins had limited possessions in the Syracuse game. Even tonight, Navy with a slight edge in faceoffs, they've had more possessions just with the Navy turnovers. Melendez playing midfield so he can get matchups like this against the short stick. Jump shot bouncer. As Daly talks to his defense. Navy in a man to man defense. They don't want to slide much. They're going to try to win matchups on the perimeter. That time they slide adjacent. Pesco moves it on. Angeles working off two picks. Bauer 
Shot clock at 15 for the Jays. Ball on the carpet, nice defense by Navy, and their bench comes to life. Those stops are big. Let's see if they can clear it and get something good going with their offense. Swanson out of the substitution box, and Daly's pass is off the mark. So clearing pass is an issue. Hopkins, transition, Pesco stopped. Here's Bauer, rebound, scores! Blue Jays convert on the Navy giveaway. Dylan Bauer, seventh goal this season. Career high in points coming off that Syracuse game. Watch the feet up top. Great save, but it bounces out. But Bauer's able to get the rebound with the score. Hopkins with the lead. It's question what would you get with almost 750 bucks easy I, i'd buy a, a smartwatch like that guy makes sense use that gps for your poor sense of direction excuse me my grandfather was a homing pigeon my internal compass is genetic must have skipped a generation uh i'm a walking gps okay which way is north okay that's up not north i should get the watch switch to progressive and you could save hundreds to spend on whatever you dream up you know Signorama as your local sign shop. We are. Our neighborhoods have small businesses, schools, and stadiums, and they all need signs. We have the solution when our neighbors need vehicle graphics, monument signs, and even huge channel letter signs for their storefront. We're here for all signage needs, from concept to fabrication and installation. Sometimes we even bring out the big guns. Signorama for all your signage needs. Thirty-eight straight games with a goal for Johns Hopkins attackman Garrett Degnan, who wears number forty to honor Demathas and Navy's Brendan Looney. Degnan, a graduate of Dematha, there's Brendan Looney, who passed away in 2010 in Afghanistan. The former Navy SEAL, DeMatha multi-sport athlete, and Navy lacrosse player who played alongside his brothers, Stephen and Billy, in the 2004 NCAA championship. Uh, his, his foundation and message of be strong, be accountable, and never complain lives on at the Naval Academy, lives on at DeMatha. And great to see that Garrick Degnan continues to honor Brendan's memory by wearing 40. The entire Looney family just th spoken so highly of him. Brendan Looney, just such a special player, a teammate to many, just a tragic loss. And Navy has given away a jersey number, number 40, honoring a special player that the Looney family is involved with. Giving that jersey, just a, a great honor. And Coach Amplo telling us it's the greatest individual honor that a Navy lacrosse player can have to wear that number 40. And it's awesome to see Degnan sporting that at Hopkins. It was 20 years ago, Navy made a trip to the NCAA championship game. Hopkins working the set play off the stoppage. A backdoor cut. Goal is waved off. That would have been a hat trick for Hunter Shaw then. And now whistles off the restart. Not sure what the delay is. Peter Milliman has thrown the coach's challenge flag. So interestingly enough, here at Hopkins in the non-league season, they're utilizing video review. But once the Big Ten season starts, the conference is not, on the men's side, the conference is not using 
video review. Which I think it's smart. You want to get practice doing it. Once you get into away games, you're not in control in terms of if it's out of conference, if another team is going to use it. NCAA play. An official's challenge, I was told. The officials are looking at it. This is not a coach's challenge, according to Russ Dillon. And one of those views, it looked like his foot was on the crease, but... Uh, he land, you know, does he land in the goal mouth right there with his hands? Now, he's, he's pushed. Was yeah. the push consequential? I, right there, yeah, he's pushed, his you hand. see. His feet, yeah, he's, he's totally he's outside. He's clearly in the goal mouth, but, but does the push contribute? You could hear the official saying he went in by himself. Not sure I buy that. The goal mouth is, is lacrosse has a goal mouth, and I'll tell you why. They want to see creativity from offensive players. They want to make the dive legal, but they also want to protect the goaltender. Yes. So the goal of the goal mouth is to try to achieve those two things. And it's, it's, it's a delicate balance. I mean, every, it seems like every game we have controversial goal mouth calls. I think it, it definitely is the case. Daly scampering across midfield, and his stick is just not working right now. He bounces that one to a teammate. Jack Horton bails him out with a good catch. So stick maintenance has been an issue for Navy goalie Dan Daly. We saw it last week in the rain up at Lehigh. See if Navy can get something going. It's good perimeter defense by Hopkins and a loose ball scooped up by Chase Erland. Hopkins struggling to clear. Hunter Jaronski now on a four on three, right down Charles Street and buries it. Looked a little dicey for Hopkins on the clear. Jaronski was able to break free. Second goal this season. The double team, good pressure for Navy. But Jaronski's able to come up with it. He's wide open. No one gets on him. Navy's defense slow plays this. They say you're a defensive midfielder. We'll give you that shot. Jaronski scored last week and played with an offensive confidence that we have not seen from him. That's a 3-0 run for Hopkins in the last four minutes, threatening to blow this one open here with five minutes to go in the first quarter. Beautiful Friday. Bonnets handcuffs Erlen, but a beautiful Friday night here. Temperatures uh, high 50s. Quinn Kesnick, Sheehan, Stanwick. Birch, our entire crew led by producer Adam Coppinger. We got Russ Dillon in the house doing stats. This game was delayed 30 minutes. Navy had a bus mishap leaving base down in Annapolis. They pulled out a gate eight and were hit by a vehicle. Their backup bus started smoking and went into flames on I-87. So they are at least, what, an hour and a half late getting here. There were no injuries, but you have to wonder for both teams. Hopkins was waiting around all day, it felt like, for this game. Navy comes off the bus, and they got to hustle and get on their game face. They were able to delay by 30 minutes. No one was hurt. And apparently it's not the first time that they've had a bus have flames get on fire, which is very unusual. You know, I would think for anyone that it would affect Hopkins. They were out here warming up for so much longer. Hopkins excited to get 
through this game and start spring break. Nice save by Daly. Good body movement. He robs Degnan from close range. Spring break started today for the Blue Jays. They're looking at two off days. Kind of a reset mechanism before the Big Ten schedule. Melendez from the midfield. Lefty rip from a severe angle. Navy at three and three. Patriot League looks like it's Army and then everybody else. And quite honestly, when you think about who's the second best team in the Patriot League, it could be anybody else. Could be Loyola, could be Colgate, could be Navy, could be BU, could be Lehigh. Lafayette, much improved. And that's Degnan, that's for sure. He has got an absolute cannon. Garrett Degnan, it's got two. Had the first goal of the day for Hopkins. Now owns that 38 goal scoring streak. But look at that stat, three plus goals in all the two games this season. Six year player, all the defenses know about him. You have to contest him. You gotta get at his, on his hands. Don't let him get to the center of the field. Now he's such a, a strong body. He's able to shoot from out far. He's able to get to the center of the field and just body up. Pete Millman said he's reliable, dependable, consistent, and trustworthy. Brings the same attitude every day. He's got perfect attendance. Sometimes he's banged up. Coach has got to say, no, you got to take it easy today. He has been a rock for this Johns Hopkins program. Think about where they were and where they are now. And his leadership has gone a long way. Navy strikes right back. Off the faceoff win. They yeah, get it cooking. Evan Conway with his first goal this season. You can hear the Naval Academy team on the sideline. Congratulations on your first goal. Just lefty rip, first career goal, first goal of the season. As you take a look at Joe Amplo, Navy skipper, alongside John Orson, their defensive coordinator. Amplo in his fifth year. He hired Dave Cottle as his offensive coordinator when Mike Phipps went to Maryland after one of the Bernhards took the head coaching job up at Colby. A little bit of a coaching carousel. Yeah, you know, Dave Cottle, I, I hear sparkling things of, of, of what he has added to this Navy program. Bring back some old school, uh, just in the lockers. You know, you think about as a resource, nice clear by Navy. He knows so much, such a Old legend. veteran coaches, we, we tend to toss and forget about, but they have a lot to give. Dave Cottle, former head coach at Loyola, beat Johns Hopkins on this field in 1999. Then he moved to Maryland, beat Johns Hopkins on this field in 2006, behind a great day from Joe Walters. Cottle so re well respected. Hopkins now in transition. And when, when you bring in a coach like that, to be just a coordinator. He doesn't have to worry about recruiting. He doesn't have to worry about parental relations. He doesn't have to worry about grades and behavior. He can connect with student athletes. He can teach, 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 teach. And so he's been, a, he's been a plus for this program in the short term. Grimes buries that ball into the turf. Daly gets a piece and a good backup job by Nick Lacalzi, there's Dave Cottle. Native of Annapolis had been splitting his time between Maryland and Florida. I think about, I had Bill Tierney on my podcast two weeks ago, but I think about a guy like Tony Seaman. Started as a high school coach in the 70s, coached at Post, Penn, Hopkins, Towson, took three of those teams to championship weekend. Finishes up now, she and he's a high school coach in Florida winning state championships for St. Andrews. Again, interacting with people, he's changing lives. Uh -huh. 
when you have the gift of coaching and be able to connect and you know really leave a lasting impact, it's really powerful. Hewitt with a riding rifle. Max Hewitt's a really good player for Navy. 43 in blue, the senior from Kent, Denver. 36 points a year ago. He was an honorable mention All-American. He must produce. Our line, sneak attack from behind, right-handed. Rebound kicks around. This is where you better have your chin strap on. Clean hit delivered by Havivian. And now the ball goes out of bounds and stays with Navy and give him a fresh 60 second shot clock with 34 to go in this first quarter. Navy playing with spirit. Hewitt for himself on the far side. Swanson near side. Haley the lefty. Jaronski broke his stick. Swanson right-handed, misses the net. 5.7 in this first quarter. Swanson takes a shot, that will not count. That will not be a goal. And Hopkins will end this first quarter up six to two. 93rd meeting in this historical series that dates back to 1908. We got a terrific Friday night in Baltimore. Coming back with more Navy and Johns Hopkins. Why choose a Sleep Number smart bed? Can it keep me warm when I'm cold? Wait, no, I'm always hot. Sleep Number does that. Can I make my side softer? Can I make my side firmer? Sleep Number does that. Can I help us sleep better and better? Please. Sleep Number does that. 94% of smart sleepers report better sleep. And now, the Queen Sleep Number C4 Smart Bed is only $15.99. Save $300. Shop now at sleepnumber.com. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Because you know that just because it fits in the cup holder doesn't make it to go. And you know how to break ah! without breaking everything. And you're definitely not doing... Okay, I don't even know what this is, but you're definitely not doing that. With Allstate, you're connected to a rate based on you. Looking for outstanding bladder leak protection? Try Poise Ultra Thin Pads with a protection guarantee with thin, flexible material that absorbs two times faster for up to 100% clean, dry, fresh protection. Try Poise. I get to love. Navy takes down Johns Hopkins on a similar night two years ago, 2022, to win here at Homewood Field. Navy's been playing lacrosse for 117 years. Wins at Hopkins. Don't grow on trees. It was Swanson and Hewitt. Max Hewitt had the big day, and Joe Amplo able to get a uh, rare road win in the series. There's Coach Amplo, graduate of Sachem High School on Long Island, played for John Donowski at Hofstra, graduating in 2000. Made a name for himself being the, uh, the first and founding coach at Marquette winning 29 games at Navy now in his fifth year. This is such a great rivalry between these two schools. This rivalry meant a lot for me personally, Sheen. I'll tell you, my brother was a, a Navy graduate, so I grew up, I was in middle school, and I used to go to all sorts of Navy games and interact with the Navy players, and those guys treated me so great. I was in fifth through eighth grade when he graduated. It was my dream to play for Navy until they didn't recruit me. And so beating them four years in a row was very satisfying. 
Nice split to left. Easy save by Erlen. He's got some deep outlets, but good job by Tolker to get in his face. And now Zulik will spin. So that the ability of that attackman to get in the goalie's face to impede his vision for the long outlet is a little nuance that attackmen should pay attention to. Jay's up four. I took 14 shots in the first quarter. That's a lot. That's on pace for 56. Melendez runs out of the box. He's covered by A.J. Marsh, 11 in the Navy jersey. Very talented freshman long sticker from McDonough School. It's been a pipeline between McDonough to Navy the last few years. The Navy's got quite an MIA pipeline to the Baltimore area private schools going on. You got Loyola, you got Severn, you got McDonough. Shot clock now at 12. Lefty curl, Collison, eyed up by Daly. Let's see what this outlet looks like. Now he struggled with his pocket. Much better pass by the lefty sophomore. Norton's a good looking player, 66 in blue. Junior from Gonzaga in DC. Mac Haley wears nine. Navy just two for 11 with their shooting. Hewitt spins and airmails one to our line. So those type of turnovers, that's what we saw last week in their loss at Lehigh in the rain. Joe Amplo and Dave Cottle spending a lot of time this week just working on fundamental passing. And the inconsistency of offense is really one of the things that has troubled Coach Amplo. But there, with the pass to our line, it didn't even look like he saw that was coming. He didn't even make a motion to try to catch it. Tenacious ride by Navy. Hopkins clearing up the box side, which is a strategic error. And on the dead ball, Peter Milliman will call timeout. He cannot be happy with that clearing pattern. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you. Not one based on whatever this person is doing. Get a rate based on you with DriveWise and the Allstate app. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, it's checked by experts. Every stitch, tag, and logo. So you'll always get that feeling of real. Welcome to Total Wine. What can I help with? My sister's hosting a party and she's big on tequila. What's like a really good one? I just had this reposado last week. Amazing. I love it already. And that is the lowest price anywhere. Whoa, that's a low price. Better make it two then. Find what you love, love what you find. Only at Total Wine and More. Only five bucks, one for junior times two. Double the juniors, that's your cue. One for you, one for your friends to go. JK, you ate them both, they'll never know. BK, have it your way. Nothing better than the JHU pep band. They sound particularly good tonight. Why you ask? Well, they got Elvis. <laughs> the costumes are like the sequin blazer. You know, they didn't show up in Charlottesville a couple weeks ago when Hopkins went down there, and, and I was very disappointed. I was calling that game with Drew Carter. Hopkins wins the yeah. game, and the pep band was not there, which is very rare. Th these are dedicated folks. 
our line now back up top for Tolker. Beautiful catch, lefty rip. Erlen dialed in. Chase Erlen is having such a strong season. Graduate student. He's in the education program, getting a master's. And Hopkins has really benefited from his play. I tell you. He's had some huge games, 16 saves in that Virginia game. Virginia, he was strong last week against Syracuse. He was more than 50%. is rock solid. Peter Milliman having recruited him to Cornell, so he knew what he's getting. Hopkins running the weave up top. Angelus now covered by Jackson Bonnets. That's a great matchup to watch. Bonnets, a Team USA U21 player, eight for Navy on defense. Degnut pump and go left-handed. Good defense by Lacalzi, the righty. Spin move, Melendez skips to Degnan. Fumbles it, plenty of time on the shot clock, 20. Crease feed will trickle out of bounds on the far side. Last touched by the Blue Jays. Good restart opportunity for Navy. Thought Max Hewitt could get underneath the defense, Sheen, off the restart. This is an offensive possession Navy needs to be smart about. They've missed the last six shots. Hovivian's got a goal from our line, and Conway has a goal. They've got not much going in the settled sets. I know they wanted to invert, see if Hopkins would play their invert zone. So this is what they're looking for. They got a good matchup here with Xavier Arline. Hopkins in their condensed invert zone behind it. Swanson's got a look, righty. Blocked by the defense, man. Scott Smith took that one. You talk about courage. Trailer break now. Jaronski feeling confident on offense. But he spins and the Blue Jays will sub. Take a look at number 18, Scott. Scott Smith, just take that shot right in the back. That'll leave a mark. Ugh. Bauer starting at attack tonight as they, John Crawley rotates Melendez through the midfield. Melendez has got, what, seven goals and six assists, shooting only 21%. I don't think he's played poorly. I think he's missed a couple opportunities, a couple shots. Didn't fall his way. I think they're just trying to mix things up. Yeah, when we're talking to Coach Milliman there. He's been very happy with the way that he's played. It's got to be frustrating for Melendez, who last year led the team with his shooting percentage close to 40%. Collison catapults that shot wide and Navy will attempt to clear. Nice job by Dane Swanson. Well respected, well liked Navy senior. Going to head off to Navy pilot school, the political science major. Guy approaches every practice, every day with a smile. Swanson's posting up bottom half of your screen. You see him trying to flash that visual target. He's got a great look to get the ball to him. Haley to our line. Our line directing traffic. Navy's quarterback runs the triple option. Swanson swings it to Hewitt. Dodges off a ball movement, nicely covered by Zulik. Swanson in space. Lefty rip finds the net. Gorgeous offensive possession for Navy. Navy worked hard for that goal. Dane Swanson wanted the ball in his stick. It's his ninth goal this season. Dave Cottle, offensive coordinator for Navy, has worked with Swanson on his shot. 
on his release, wants him shooting overhand. Beautiful placement, sliver of an angle there. Left handed shot, he's got a lot of time and room. 6'4", senior's got some heat. Right to left move down the alley. You've got to respect that shot, and he's put in the extra work this week. That sweat equity yields Navy's third goals, and a rare face-off win for Hopkins in this game. Navy has owned that category seven to four. Zach Hayashi, Navy's freshman Fogo, is the real deal. Facing off is going to be an area of concern for Pete Milliman and this Blue Jay team as they head into conference play, where Navy has Luke Weirman. Michigan's got Justin Wheatfelt. And certainly nationally when the NCAA tournament starts. Maryland with Weirman, and he sat out the Brown game. Feet inside of Jimmy Ayers is kicked around, and now Daly looks deep. You know, that was a big deal last week. I was shocked that Brown took Maryland into overtime, but Luke Weirman, as you said, the Fogo did not play for the Terps. Logan McNaney, their goalie, had a rare subpar day. And you think about Hopkins' win at Virginia, well, they caught a break when Anthony Gobriel, Virginia's Fogo, Degnon on the two on one rush, and that's either a great save or off the iron. Brett Martin and Degnan trying to capitalize on another Navy failed clear. Look at this, just ring the post. That goes far into the stands at Hopkins here. Okay, off the crossbar, the one, the one teaching point there for shooters is try not to fade down the alley. You want to finish that as a shooter at the top of the crease. So always work your way towards the middle. Roll back by Ayers to Degnan. That was a catch and shoot. He's got the, he's got the full arsenal, doesn't he? He's got the catch, pump, and go. He's got the crow hop. That was a fast release in, in, in the shooting world of Garrett Degnan. He's not usually a dodger, but he had a great dodging goal against Syracuse last week. He's got week. enough, you know? So yeah. he, he doesn't really have a right hand either, but he's got enough to keep defenders off balance. An excellent size, can power through, beat you with his body. And he's got the green light. He takes the bulk of the shots on this offense. Done with setbacks in high school. He got mono one summer. Got Salmonella another summer. Lost 15 pounds and was hospitalized during the recruiting cycle. But didn't lose, didn't lose his, his goal. And uh, came to Hopkins as a freshman and radically changed his body from freshman to sophomore year. Effective pick set behind, and Daly digs that one out. Nice stop by the lefty. Hopkins' pick created a terrific advantage, but Daly is there, his sixth save. Hopkins has had some long offensive possessions. Just one goal between both teams in the second quarter. Good stop and clear from Navy and Joe Amplo wants to talk it over. These two programs, historic rivals. Navy with 17 pre-NCAA titles. Johns Hopkins with 44. We have to hunt here and here, okay? Until you go, this is open. Pete Milliman, fathead. If it's covered, if you're covered here, then we go into open. Love getting an inside peek into the huddles. Coach Milliman excited because his mom's here on a Friday night game. He's got the weekend off and he gets to go watch uh, 
his mom Mary is a music teacher up at Friends, and he gets to go watch a concert at the Friends School, which is, I don't know what, half a mile up Charles Street? Not far away the at all. The music department at Friends, I will say. You were raving about world it. world class. My brother, Pace's daughter and son went to Friends. Sophia sang in the choir and played in the band, and they got like multiple different types of bands. I was blown away every performance up at Friends. You've got a real appreciation for music. And Coach Millman telling us that he grew up around a ton of music. He's not, himself is not a musician, but a lot of family members are. He's got a ton of family in town this weekend. He lives uh, pretty close. He was able, during the delay, to race back home and play with his kids for a bit. Hopkins now has been scoreless during the last 13 minutes. Oh, shooting 0 for 8. It's Navy off that Joe Amplo timeout. Navy hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since 2016. Prior to that, it was 2009. Richie Meade had a nice, nice thing going in the early 2000s. Great Skip stick. pass, good stick in the passing lane by Patrick Deans. Collision coming up here. Quinton Kilrain went for the scoop. Bonnets miss, missed it, but a good crowner. That's going to be a push with possession. Pavivian hustling. And it pays off. Long pass by Bonnets to the near side. Swanson. And we'll have a stoppage. Tommy Vivian does a fine, fantastic job just being first to this ball, and he's in the scrum, and ultimately he gets pushed from behind with possession. Navy's 0 for 1 on their EMO this tonight. Struggled all season, just 22%. Push, See, the push from behind has got to be from the front or the side. Possession is nine-tenths the law. Vivian Sr. going to be a Navy pilot. Extra man, Will Schiffenhaus, the lefty 27 on the far side. He and Tolker like to rip it. Here's Tolker underneath and buries it. Highway to the danger zone. Navy's on the board with the extra man. This makes it a two-goal game. Toker gets his 12th goal this season. Really come on strong last two games. This is excellent passing. Beautiful job hitting Toker right on the crease. He had to reach for that a little bit. Does an excellent job staying outside the crease. Great control and finish. Tiptoe Tolker, junior from Loyola High School. Grew up in Catonsville, home of Mark Dixon. Henry's dad, Greg, uh, in the Hall of Fame at Mount St. Mary's. Arguably the best player in program history. And Navy's playing with, again, great spirit and energy here. They've scored three straight, and they're not going away without a fight. And that's what this series has always been. Navy came in here two years ago, pulled off the win. Hopkins absolutely dominated the first quarter, led 6-2, to two, and it's been all Navy this second quarter. Conway, Swanson, and Tolker, three straight. After multiple incidents and their short journey from Annapolis, what does it take, what do you think, about an hour? On a, on a Friday rush hour? Yeah, I mean, back that's in the you know, back before '97, back in the day, driving a, driving a Navy was a little longer, more scenic though. I tell you that much. Always loved that drive. It's kind of the harbinger of spring. You see the blossoms coming out, some of the farmland turning green. Even on '97, is pretty. There's a lot of trees and. '97. '97 is a super highway. <laughs> it's a freeway. I always enjoyed the trip down to Navy. Navy Marine Corps Stadium used to have the most plush grass surface in the sport. It's a beautiful field. Hop needs a goal. 
Pop needs a goal. They haven't scored since the 305 mark of the first quarter. Hunter Chauvet. He's got a goal. Bauer has moved to attack. Melendez is running through the midfield. Angelus has been quiet. Credit Jackson Bonnets, eight and blue. An all-American caliber defender. Grimes wants his left hand. There's 66. Jack Norton, that guy flashes on tape, man. He's a stud. And Navy's got numbers. He's got a trailer now. A.J. Marsh trailing the play. Norton's still open, but Joe Ampla calls timeout. Let me tell you, momentum has shifted here in Charm City. Hopkins came out. They're up 6-1. to one. And suddenly, Navy's back in this ball game. Navy's cleaned up some of its turnovers. Watch the defensive pressure here. Excellent pursuit, gets a ground ball and a, a great fast break. Very smart timeout though for Navy, set this up. Chad Connolly with the handle, but it was Jack Norton with the stout defense against Grimes. Grimes is a monster, he's a big dude, but Norton is, he's all, he's all jacked up himself. Saw him pregame, I asked Coach Ample, I'm like, who's that? 66, is he a lefty? He goes, yeah, he's a lefty. And you can see him use that left-handed two-hand wrap check. He's got some smiles from John Orson and Head coach Joe Amplo. Girl dad Joe Amplo's got three daughters. One of them is a plebe at the United States Naval Academy. Charlotte's a 10th grader and Lily's in 7th grade. Great place to raise a family, Annapolis. And on base there. I was on base for the Army Navy wrestling match a couple weeks ago. We forgot how beautiful it was. I mean, the camp, there's not a speck of dust on that campus. The chapel's gorgeous. It's pristine. The quads. I like everything about Annapolis. The water feels like you're like on a beach vacation. This Hopkins team has been scoreless since 3.05 in the first quarter. Shooting, they, were, they started the first quarter very hot. They've been 0 for 8 in their last shot attempts. It almost felt like they had been slowing things down offensively, working the time of possession. Yeah, Hopkins got to restart their engine somehow. Out of that timeout, Blue Jays come out in a man-to-man -man defense. They've not shown any zone this year. Jays play an aggressive style of defense. They're not afraid to slide or double team. They've tended to foul too much this season. I thought last week against Syracuse, they slid far too much, creating three or four goals when Syracuse used ball handlers as decoys to draw slides. They're such a great passing team. This cup the Hopkins defense, though, has been very strong, confrontational. Tip of the spear. Swanson. Liquid smoke. Off the timeout. Haley with the assist. Game on. Dane Swanson is a threat. Third straight multi-goal game for him. Why the double team here? Why does Martin go? That player is not a threat to score a goal. Yeah, the slide rotation is not there to, hand, to handle Swanson from the outside. You know he's a threat from scoring the outside, just a miscommunication. Defense is about making decisions. You gotta play the ball well, but help defense is all about making decisions. That was a poor decision by Hopkins to double team a man who was not a threat. Angelus thought about it. Melendez actually checked that, now playing point on attack. Look at Navy really put in the 35 pressure 35 seconds to go now in what's a one goal game. Navy's defense has Hits the shutout in this second quarter. Matt Collison, the big lefty from Canada. Angels has been quiet.
gets to the middle, feeds to the left side. Collison sends that one, heads up, out into University Parkway. 5.1 to go before halftime. Take arms here, listen to your goalie, he's calling check. You better take arms if you're the a Navy defense. Play physical inside. Here's the feed, Degnan catch, Daly. That shot blocked in front, and a terrific second quarter. Joe Amplo and Navy engineer a 3-0 quarter. They were down 6-1. In all, they've scored four straight, holding Hopkins scoreless. 18 minutes and five seconds. Impressive defensive effort for Navy. Daly with seven saves in the first two quarters. And Swanson with a huge two scores to make this a one-goal ball game. Jays up by one. So how do you make it? There's Natasha's way. Be shy, focus on yourself, till they focus on you. Or Juana's way. Why be one champ when I want to be two? Be like Yusra. Let nothing Syrian refugee pulls boat to safety. destroy your dreams. What about Zoe? Never satisfied. Not with trophies or stunts. Or maybe you beat doubt one step at a time, like Johnny. Then there's Dennis. Work with what you got to get what you don't. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. How are you gonna get here? sponsor of Hopkins Lacrosse. We have served the financial needs of the Hopkins community since 1971. Visit us on the web at jhfcu.org for more information. Go Jays! surgery in the next 10 days. Felt the shooting pain in my knee. Oh, I don't know what I did, but I did something. I stepped off to the side again and it buckled. The plan is to get you to run again. The plan is to get you back to where you were. We can fix this. To know that I could be back out there. You know, I'm way better now than I was pre-surgery. Welcome to Johns Hopkins. This week on The Cross, Paul Carcaterra and Charlotte North take a look at the art of shooting, the nuances and subtleties of finding corners. A lot like in hoops, when you can stretch a defense, it opens up everything for an offense. So for you as an outside shooter, what's critical? Spacing is one, body positioning is two. I think in both the men's and the women's game, the opportunity presents itself to take an outside shot, but like you said, you gotta have some of them on your team to be able to stretch that defense. So for me, it's coming up, seeing where my shooting lane is and being able to get into that form within a millisecond because that's all the time you get before that defense sees your hands are back and you're ready to shoot. So it's an anticipation of where the other pressure's coming from? Exactly. In terms of spacing? Gotcha. You gotta read where the defense is coming from, where they're spinning, okay. but once you have time and room, you've gotta be ready to let it go at max speed. You have spacing, and then there's the mechanics of actually shooting the rock. I think the biggest thing in the game of lacrosse, a lot's played by your ear, yeah. nice and in tight, finesse. 
But I think in terms of being an outside shooter, you gotta be able to get your hands up and away. You gotta be back behind your body. It also hides that ball from the goalie. So the more you can get off your body, the more you can stretch your arms back and away, the better you're gonna have velocity behind that ball. I also think, get back to that spot. When your hands are away from your body, eventually, and we'll see when you shoot in full motion, your hip torque is way more aggressive too. So when the hands are away, it's natural for the hips to snap. I think there's a lot of opportunity to catch and go right away without stepping into a curl hop, but I think at the same time, that's where that hand placement becomes extremely critical. So let's do a few of these. So we got find a seam, hands away from your body, hip rotation. Okay, I like how your hands are away from your body. You're hiding it from the goalie, but you're also really forcing your hips to snap. Hands away, snap, goalie nightmare. Bam! This thing's smoking. Grip it and rip it. The weight transfer from back to front and get that snap going. Charlotte North and Paul Carcaterra on this week's edition of The Cross. You know, he come to my home for summers when it came to helping people. The gecko was born ready. And his parents argued with me. They wanted him to become a doctor. I said, no, he wants to do insurance and he's good at it. Oh, sure, he's the gecko gecko, but I mean, he's my best friend. Like, even back in grade school, while others played house, he protected it. Hey, slow down! Geico helps find the right coverage for your car and home. You're not my dad. From cars to home to pets, it's easy to Geico. didn't believe in magic but her daughter was happy to prove her wrong you were made to dream about it for years we were made to help you book it in minutes when mario needs to be at his best he needs protection that goes beyond dove men with 72 hour protection and one quarter moisturizer so he can forget his underarms and focus on being unforgettable dove men forgettable underarms unforgettable you eBay Authenticity Guarantee is checked by experts. Every stitch, tag, and logo. So you'll always get that feeling of real. Midway through this game, midway through the 2024 season, it's Hopkins and Navy Homewood Field on a Friday night. Stats and highlights up next after this. with me. She helps you feel better. Bugs and insects are all healthy for you. Amelia took us to the beach. She teaches me some gymnastics. We like color. We draw flowers and then we go skateboarding. From babysitters to nannies to daycare centers. Find all the care you need at care.com. The rush to the playoffs. No, no, no. The biggest games. The biggest stage. The Stanley Cup Final returns on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Players' Championship. One way or another, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you, get you. 
A gorgeous Friday night in Charm City. Hopkins jumped out to a 6-1 to one lead, playing in their first home game in a month. But Navy came roaring back in that second quarter. They have scored four straight goals, and suddenly we got a tight game. Quinn Kesnick alongside Sheehan Stanwick, Stanwick Birch, and uh, you know, Navy had the bus mishap. They got off to a slow start, but what changed in this game, do you think? I think they just got some momentum, just a couple possessions. They really, they held Hopkins scoreless that second quarter. It looked like Hopkins just kind of got a little stagnant. They were so moving so well, very fluid the first quarter, and then the second quarter, it was really all Navy. A couple great possessions. Dane Swanson came on fire, got the first goal of the quarter, and then ended it of the second quarter with a goal. So just a kind of a tale of two different quarters. Garrick Degnan came into this game with 100 and 36 career goals. He has now scored in 38 straight games, setting a school record. Just a great score for Degnan, the opening seconds of this game. Huge milestone for him and the program, and just an excellent job shooter. He gets the bulk of the shots of this offense. And Hunter Chauvet, the freshman, has two goals to his name. Everything seemed to be working scheme. well for Hopkins in the first quarter. They had the good. dominant hand. Chauvet. Navy had a lot of turnovers. Hopkins was able to capitalize. Chauvet with basically a, a no-angle score. But Navy suddenly has held Hopkins scoreless for 18 minutes. Dane Swanson had two goals in that second quarter. His Navy shot three of seven. Yeah, Dane Swanson, a huge reason. He's had eight goals in the last two games coming into this game. Two more tonight so far. Huge part of the momentum swing for Navy with Dane Swanson. So you talk about energy, a game that was delayed uh, over a half an hour. Navy's first bus got hit by a car leaving the academy out of gate eight. Everyone was fine, but they had to to uh, get a replacement bus. Well, that replacement bus started smoking and then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then uh, became a, a fire issue on 97 as Zach Hayashi now has tied the score up at six apiece. Navy sidelines on fire now. Tied up game. Hayashi has been dominant at the faceoff. First goal of the season. Hayashi, only a freshman from nearby McDonough School, a terrific three-sport athlete. Little wrestling. He's got power at 580, goes a buck 90. Seven seconds into this third quarter, you get a juice goal from a guy Xavier Arline said was the toughest player in the program. Senior to freshman identified already. They love Hayashi in Annapolis. Such high praise of Hayashi. Love his tight cradle getting down the center of the field, the way he brings his stick back to get the power. Hayashi, a warrior. He's also off to a great academic start at the academy. Over a 3-9 GPA. Getting high. They rank students in terms of academics and their military performance. And Hayashi is uh, he's on the he's on the top of the top of all those lists or close to him. Number one in the military order of merit in class of 2027. Coach Ample saying he's got no off switch, just tons of energy. Navy now playing with confidence. You can see the way they're moving the ball. Hewitt gets himself into a little jam and then tosses the ball to Xavier Arline. Lefty dish shot. Erlin's there. Now we got a free for all around the crease. Great ground ball by Havivian. Navy has transformed themselves here in front of our eyes from the first to second quarters. Nice ground ball for Scott Smith. Aren't like coming around the crease like that. I don't like when players come around the crease and just do that backhanded shot. I find it very easy for the goalie to read, unless you're really going to change the level of that shot. The problem with that shot, Sheehan, 
it may don't hit, go in. Uh, no, it, if it hits one out of ten times, we see that one goal on Twitter and Instagram all week long, and, and kids want to do it. The reality is it's a low percentage play, but you wouldn't know that if when you're surfing on your phone. It looks great when you score, and not so great when you don't. Melendez with a face dodge and a dodge shot. He rings that ball off the crossbar. So unofficially, Rusta Lynn has that as the second pipe shot by Johns Hopkins. Special Friday action here on ESPN Plus. Kick off what should be a, an exciting weekend. Maryland and Virginia play tomorrow on BTN. Pete Medhurst will have that call. ESPN, we got some good games. Michigan and Notre Dame. I'm calling that game with Chris Cotter. Kark and Cotter work uh, an Ivy League game on Sunday. Cornell and Princeton. Tomorrow you got Yale Harvard, that's on ESPN Plus. And there's a, a full menu of strong women's games, Syracuse and North Carolina. Love this point of the season with a lot of the conference matchups starting to heat up. Jack Flaherty, the tall midi, to our line, covered by Zulik. Hopkins has got the luxury where Zulik and Smith can switch, and it's not the end of the world. Zulik applying some pressure to our line as the shot clock's below 10. Our line's not been able to get much going on. One Flaherty says inside, shot goes wide. Arline's played a nice game, though. You know, he's not killing it statistically. Navy just dumps this. But I, I think he's playing a fine game, though, Shane. I think he's, he's picking his spots. He's applying some pressure. If it's not there, he's made really good decisions. That's what you want. Smart decisions with the ball, especially against this Hopkins defense. Ayers with the auto clear. Puts it in a hyper speed. And now you've got a Blue Jays offense held scoreless since the 305 mark of the first quarter. It's gotten very stale. The Hopkins needs to go back to their basics. The offensive movement, off ball players, the threats. Now we've got some rain coming down. Joe Amplo said that Navy wants to win some matchups on the perimeter. They don't want to get in, into the sliding, the supporting game against this Hopkins team. Jays have missed 10 straight shots. A curl attempt, there you see Bauer slips and loses his footing. So Shane, you mentioned the rain, you can see it now in the lights. Chad Connolly trying to clear, he's de-sticked, heads up. Justin Queen, Navy's clear box down near the midfield. Clearing in turnovers have been an issue for Navy, three and three on the season. So it's not panic mode if you're in the Patriot League. Everybody looks about the same, except for Army, who's undefeated. Army facing off with Lehigh this weekend. Loyola plays BU in a big game. Collison to Degnan. Peshko against the short, he flips it to Collison, and he finds net. A little slip pick action. And the scoreless streak is snapped. That assist was a thing of beauty. Love the flip pass. Collison gets his 12th goal this season and breaks the scoring drought for Hopkins. Watch Peshko, flips it behind him, a little behind the back. That's excellent. Organized, pinpoint passing. Coll Beautiful. Collison's moving towards Pesco. So his defender takes that outside shoulder leverage, thinking that maybe there's a pick coming. Because you, you play picks like a bookend. There's a bio for Matt Collison. So you've got leverage on that defensive player when you slip and cut. It was a nice pass by Pesco putting it in front. You see the big smile. Drought was 22 minutes and 41 seconds. That was a goal with Scott Style. Big hit. Till Rain stood up. But done. Choppy strides. Trailer break.
Raposo, Degna and sniffs it out. He doesn't see numbers, and he wants to settle. So Hopkins now needs to play with some urgency here. They found themselves in a game against Navy. 93rd meeting. This series defined college lacrosse in the 1950s, 60s, and early 70s. A lot of national championships back then between the teams. Navy had their dual sport athletes, their goons playing defense off the football team, and they had Jimmy Lewis. Think about Michael Sowers. Well, you put him back in, in the 1960s. That was Jimmy Lewis. Hopkins got good with Joe Cowan. Navy won 17 national championships before 1970. Beat Hopkins eight straight times from 59 to 66. Bill Builder back. Back when the ball was on the ground a little more in the sport of lacrosse than it is now. Bauer getting hammered by the short stick defense. Norton chasing Bauer. Angel sets a pick. Marsh switch, switches off. Good matchup for Jacob Angelus. Pump and go. He's looking for the S dodge. It's not there. Plenty of time. Angelus sneak attack off the iron. Degnan rebound. Lefty blocked by the outer defense. We got a reset at 60, and Hopkins will chill out a bit. So Navy's defense is going to be tested here cardio wise. It's a long possession. Ayers, right-handed rip. Nice closeout by Jackson Bonnets. Marsh cross field to LaCalzi. Well done by Navy's defense. See if they can clear it. And they can. Jackson Peters. Two-way player. Arline! How about that, Navy? You play good D. It's a clean clear. And Arline from distance from Peters. Xavier Arline leads the team in total points, picks his spots on when he wants to press today, gets the score from defense to offense. Another tie, it's 7-7. Get ready for the rush to the playoffs. The biggest games on the biggest stage. The most intense playoffs in sports begin in April. And culminate with the most revered trophy of all. The Stanley Cup Final returns to ABC and ESPN Plus this June. The rush to the playoffs. The biggest games. The biggest stage. The Stanley Cup Final returns on ABC and ESPN+. Institute of Technology Highlanders. <laughs> that is a story. There's a book in that one. Quinnipiac, a nice start. They've got wins over Bryant and Brown. Harvard, the burn method. They square off with Yale this weekend. And guess who's ranked number one? Keep the change. Army's ranked number one. Big win up in the Carry Dome against Syracuse.
they face off against Lehigh. Tyler Dunn with the faceoff win. Angelus face dodged and he stood up. And Navy creates a turnover. Sideline is erupting for Navy. Emotions are high. Hopkins gets a faceoff win. They found some magic, you know. If you just join style, oh, there's, there's the issue. Dan, Dan Daly's goalie stick. He, he just passing. It's just so untrustworthy. Another bounce pass on a wet night. He's got a pretty vicious whip or a hook in his stick. But to encapsulate Navy season, we asked Joe Amplo, Sheen, and he, he said inconsistent. And that's what they've been. They got wins over the Mount St. Mary's, Hofstra, a great win over BU, losses to Towson, Penn State. They actually played good defense, couldn't score that day. And then last week, after having a 3-1 lead at Lehigh, you're watching that game, and like it's there for them if somehow they they lose, and it's a senior class at Navy that's never beaten Lehigh. That was a tough loss. Conference game, a lot of turnovers, a lot of them unforced. Cold and rainy is Haley denied by Erlin, who's been a cornerstone of this defense. I get the feeling at times that this Hopkins schedule has been arduous to the point that this team needs to they need a little breather and a reset. They have played a brutal schedule. Opened up with Denver, a loss in overtime. Towson, who's turned out to be really good this year. Georgetown, Loyola, North Carolina, Virginia, Syracuse in a row. Three in a row on the road. This is their first home game since February 17th. It's the start of their spring break, so hopefully get a few more hours of sleep. Bauer, sloppy, over and back violation. Navy eyes it up. They don't have numbers. Maybe a trailer here. Jackson Peters, he's a threat. Uh, he stuck his toe in the bath, and it was a little too hot. Pulls it out. Now Navy will sub. Navy's never led. Navy was down six to two at the end of the first quarter and just held Hopkins scoreless for that second quarter, battled back. Hopkins in their invert zone. It's a formation that Syracuse feasted on last week, especially when the Blue Jays got tired. They couldn't win a faceoff. And the defense kind of wilted on the vine. Keegan Hauser. Jaronski's been active, and he forces that turnover. Kind of what we're talking about when you see the inconsistencies of Navy. Good play, bad play. Good play, bad play. Five minutes to go, third quarter. Seasonably warm. Let's just take a look at Saturday on the ACC network at noon. It's a women's game, North Carolina and Syracuse. Finding myself, Sheen, watching a lot more women's lacrosse now that I am the dad of a daughter who's playing ninth grade. You got a vested interest now. That can't pass. Pesco behind the back. Woohoo! You got a lot going on. You see the high skill level. It was Collison to Angelus to Pesco. The run out to the USNA. Huge win for Navy to get that ball, chasing the shot. Daly continues to play with a stick that he cannot throw accurate passes with. Oh, that was one. He bounces one and the other's right on target. Hopkins started this game shooting about 50%, 6 of 12. Since then, 1 of 16, but a good job by Scott Smith on the far sideline. And then he throws it away. Wow, Navy's ball. Quick restart threat here. The last couple turnovers for both Navy and Hopkins are on passes that we really shouldn't be making those mistakes this point of the season. Oh 
Mac Haley, whose brother TJ plays for Georgetown. Swanson to Hewitt. Got good feet. No foul called. You can hear it from up here. Haley left-handed pump and rip. Nice stop by Erlin. Deflects that wide. Tolker comes up with a rebound, and Navy gets a fresh 60. Swanson in, it trickles in. Chase Erlin got a good chunk of that, and the ball just squirrels itself over the goal line. And Navy takes the lead over Johns Hopkins. First lead of the day, and Dane Swanson, who was cold shooting in the beginning of the season, has come on strong the last three games. This one just trickles in, the ball needs to go completely over the goal line. Probably the best offensive set for Navy was this possession. Lots of opportunities. Erlin gets the good tomahawk chop. Got his top hand down to the turf, and the ball just squeaks under his stick with enough English to roll over the goal line. Dane Swanson now has three goals in this game. This is a, a just a, an incredible run. 6-1 Navy run after Hopkins started this game on a 6-1 run of their own. Marsh, Peters. Dangerous two-way player, playing more defense today and more wings, less offense. They ran him into the ground last week at Lehigh. Coach Amplo admitted that, and you see that adjustment playing itself out. Navy now going deeper on their bench. Trying to steal a shift. Conway scored earlier. LaRocca, far side. Havivian. Our line draws two. Our line's got a matchup he likes. Just needs space. Quick double, skip pass, near side, Conway, yard sale. Yard sale in Homeland, Saturday mornings. Smith, he's got numbers, Jaronski is a trailer. Lacalzi does a nice job on Dagna on the, on the far side. Maybe, perhaps, that check will light a fire under Hopkins. Great play for Smith. Take a look at this again. Not only comes up with the check Scott Smith does, but also gets a great ground ball. That, that's a big time yard sale. They got some nice yard sales up here at Homeland. Six on five break, Jackson Peters. He's got Marsh trailing the play. Lefty wing shot, Toker, money. Hopkins not getting back into the hole off their turnovers in the transition game. Great score for number 10, Henry Tolker, the junior. Coming off a four-goal game at Lehigh. And just look at this, that pushing transition, not much of an angle. Look at where he shoots that. Hopkins transition defense out of sorts there. You had Bonnets and Peters leading the rush. No defender kicks out to the side. Not much of an angle at all. Look at Tolker, 5'10", Catonsville, Maryland. Father Greg, you talked about, play lacrosse at Mount St. Mary's, the program's all-time leading scorer. Kid's a great shooter. I remember seeing him, I think, in the Naptown Challenge. Right away, you could tell that he had that lefty rip. Good face-off. Hopkins bounces back, it's Tyler Dunn. But Tolker, 23 goals as a freshman. 27 last year. He's a great wing shooter. Classic lefty. The rare Hopkins face-off win in this contest. Hayashi has gotten the best of the Blue Jay duo. Shouldn't say rare. It's 11 to 8. Clock and score. Shot clock and, and, and game clock almost synced here. As Navy's on an 8-1 run. Queen and Pesco. 
staring at each other. Jays initiate with Collison. Long dodge, Melendez can't handle it. He just dropped it. Bonnets is there, that's what he does. Eight from Navy is terrific off the carpet. And an accurate cross field pass. Can Navy clear? Here's French. Our line as the quarter comes to an end. Another stellar quarter for the midshipmen. They outscore Hopkins four to one in the third. They have held the Blue Jays to one goal in 33 minutes. Why choose a Sleep Number smart bed? Can it keep me warm when I'm cold? Wait, no, I'm always hot. Sleep Number does that. Can I make my side softer? Can I make my side firmer? Sleep Number does that. Can I help us sleep better and better? Please. Sleep Number does that. 94% of smart sleepers report better sleep. And now, the Queen Sleep Number C4 smart bed is only $15.99. Save $300. Shop now at sleepnumber.com. Chipotle's Chicken Al Pastor is back, and it's fire on every level. Fresh chicken, hot off the grill, mixed with marita peppers, a splash of pineapple, and fresh lime. It's where fire meets flavor. Chipotle's Chicken Al Pastor. The wait is over. Baltimore, we have seen Johns Hopkins jump out to a 6-1 lead, and then it's been all Navy since. The midshipmen have jumped up and are putting a major shock into the Blue Jays. A rivalry that goes back to uh, 1908, 93rd meeting. Hopkins up in the overall series, 63-28 and one. Hayashi, such a scrapper, ground ball. But he tosses that a little too aggressively to Norton. Hopkins bench wants a foul there for interference as Degnan comes up with the Lucy. Near side, McDermott cranks that one wide. Gonna award that ball to Hopkins. Almost yeah. looked like Navy was closer. He was. Ayers gets that call. Hopkins now one of 15 shooting in the last two quarters with 10 turnovers. Turnovers have been costly. Peshko's got an assist to Degnan. Garrett Degnan scored earlier if you're just joining this game to. Continue his streaks, 38 straight games with a goal for Garrett Dagnon. He sets the Johns Hopkins all-time record. Passing Terry Reardon and Ryan Brown. He's got a shorty now. Let's see if he can dodge. Nice little stutter move. Lefty rip. Daly is there. Dan Daly's been solid. His passing's been his only issue. And he flips that one to safety. I like Dan Daly. I like him on tape. I think he's got good balance, excellent reactions. He's a keeper for Navy. Eight saves for the sophomore out of New Jersey. 14 saves in that Boston University win. Dane Swanson's got a pair of goals. He kind of got this rally going and going by nailing some mid-range shots. Haley inside. Irwin got a piece. 
controls his rebound. Now let's see if Hopkins can find something in transition. It's a six on five for Brett Martin. Trailer, kill rain. Good recovery by Navy. Teams match subs. It looks to me like Hopkins is a little hesitant on offense. I'd like to see them push it a little bit. Look like they had some opportunities to push things. Then they made the smart decision when they didn't have it just to wait for the substitutions to come in. In general, Navy's done a nice job on these picks, getting through, maintaining their matchups. Joe Ampo said, we're going to win some one-on-ones. We're not going to get into the sliding business because this is a passing team. With that in mind, somebody on Hopkins has to go to the rack and win a matchup. Here's Angelus. The He's the guy. He's a leading assister, really distributes the ball so well. He draws a double, Sheehan, and Degnan is robbed by Daly. So that was good offense, right? And that's one of the things I, re I really like about this Hopkins staff. They'll look at these plays and break them down and say, that was the right pass. It was a great move by Angelus. He gets it to Degnan. Credit Daly with the save. Yeah, they're pretty state-of-the-art. Talking to Pete Millman before the game, I was asking about warm-up time and he said well you slid the game to 732 my all my staff is is out of whack he goes Crawley will be in there watching the, the, the video of, of warm-ups to figure out where he can get an extra 30 seconds I said you film warm-ups and he, he goes yeah we got two cameras at the top of the building we got two cameras at the top of the stadium so you're on tape if you're if you're playing at any time at Homewood Field they can look at it from any angle almost like Google or Arline, Swanson, and Tolker with Navy's last three goals. That ball deflected or not? Nope. Just sent out to University Parkway. Turnover, Navy. Love the look there. Just has to be a better pass. Pesco with the knee sleeve on his right knee. Short, choppy strides. Collison against Norton. Two really sturdy ball players. Look at Collison lean in. Norton holds his ground. Marsh, the freshman long pole on D, 11 in blue. He's going to be a star. Pesco. Angelus now. Working hard. Shot clock at 25. Feet to the far side. Missed a layup. Degnan robbed from close range. Hopkins, zero goals in the last 15 minutes. They have scored one goal dating back to the 305 mark of the first quarter. And Navy has made another stop daily with another bounce pass. I did really like that opportunity for Degnan. Beautiful pass for Angelus. That'll fall. Both teams have yet to score here in the first five minutes of this fourth quarter. Quinn Kesnick, Sheehan Stanwick Birch, our producer Adam Coppinger, our terrific crew. And then there's Russ, our stat guy. You know it's a big game on a Friday night to kick off this really interesting weekend. Kind of like the last weekend of non-conference play. Maryland and Virginia playing, Michigan and Notre Dame. I'll have that game tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And you got the Ivy League starting conference play. Yale and Harvard. Princeton Cornell, Sunday, 2 o'clock, ESPNU. Cotter and Clark will break it down. Good stick in the passing lane by Kilrain, six and white. Our line's got a shorty. Splits to his left, roll back. Hauser. Flaherty. Stood up well by Deans. Shot clock at five. Conway tied up by Kilrain. Strong defense by Johns Hopkins. Blue Jays are certainly battle-tested with their February and March schedule. 
part of the deal when you come to play here on the Homewood campus. Deans solo on sides. It's a nice effort by Patrick Deans. that stat the start of the game shooting six of 12 since then they've gone one for 21 a lot of them especially in that last offensive sequence good shot opportunities just didn't fall but navy's defense has pressured them to some lower angles daly's come up with some big time saves three pipe shots as well grimes left-handed rip misses the mark nice defense by chad Connolly, the sophomore I like Navy short stick defenders. Again, I said the Patriot League, you throw out Army, it's wide open. Cut and stopped by Daly, his best of the day. Point, point blank range, robs Hunter Shaw that eight stops Dan Daly. Daly has been a big reason this Hopkins offense has not been able to connect. All the doorstep there gets another great stop. Halfway through the fourth quarter. Hope you had a great week. As we kick off this weekend. Next goal looms large. Haley wants his left. Hewitt. Got good feed. He's tied up well. Navy operating with so much more confidence. Swanson, big righty shooter. Skip pass, knocked down. Diving play by Scott Smith and a good grounder. Here come the Jays. They've got a five on four. Jackson Raposo got a trailer. Navy gets into the hole now as Hopkins will complete their substitution. The defense bails them out. Scott Smith, he's got a great ability when he makes a check and falls to the ground. He gets up so quickly, bounces back up. Power through the midfield. Number seven's been a party starter for the Jays this season. He draws the pole. Collison, who had that big day against Virginia. He and Norton have squared off all day long. Degnan left-handed off the post and in. Mr. Reliable, Garrett Degnan. Degnan gets his 24th goal this season. Love his patience here. There's a little bit of a stutter step, gets the ball, increases his angle, gets it wide open, finally slips one by Daly. Davies up, it's nine to eight. I'm a bird stuck in Larry Bird's attic. And I'm going cuckoo. Hmm? You may be a legend on the court, but you're an amateur up here. So get off stage, save money, and be protected from mayhem, like me. The future is threatened by enemies often unimaginable. When there are battles to win for America's future, there is one constant. Marines. Authenticity guarantee is checked by experts. Every stitch, tag, and logo. So you'll always get that feeling of real. One 
goal game here in Baltimore. Navy goalie Dan Daly has 11 stops, and after a shaky first quarter, he's been spectacular. Yeah, controlling the ball inside the crease, some point blank stops, 11 saves on the evening so far. Point, point really point has frustrated Green, this Hopkins offense. That eight stops. Passing was an issue for Daly last week in the rain at Lehigh. They worked with a bunch of new sticks this week in practice, dipping them in a bucket of water. They knew it might be raining tonight. And, and, his, and his bounce his, passing has, has not uh, hurt the team too much. Former number 65 IL recruit coming out of Wayne High School in New Jersey. Good ground ball for Patrick Deans. Key face-off for the Blue Jays, and they win it. They're minus three in the face-off stat. That was a, a category that cost them big time last week and a loss to Syracuse. Hopkins is five and two. They start Big Ten play on Sunday. Next Sunday, I should say. At Rutgers, bada bing. Scarlet Knights always tough on those standalone home games on Sunday. Pesco, Iso into dangerous waters. Step down and a whistle, moving pick. You wondered how Bauer was so open. Restart ready is Navy. Connolly gets help from Marsh. They're gonna slow things down, but Navy has pushed a transition and been successful. Yeah, five minutes to go. Now's not the time to slow things down. Navy looks for this big upset. Hopkins ranked in the top 10 at number seven. Navy coming off a loss last week to Lehigh. Swanson playing catch in the far side with Hewitt. Max Hewitt had a big day two years ago when Navy beat Johns Hopkins on this field, 11 to 10. Four goals, he had the game tying goal, the game winning goal. Haley circles. Here's Hewitt. He's got the pole. Swanson's got the pole. It's going to be Haley. Spin. Double team comes quickly. Hopkins loves to slide. Very aggressive. Hewitt with 10 on the shot clock. Swanson swings it far side and it goes out of bounds. A really good defense from Johns Hopkins. Not a bad possession by Navy, but everything they did was answered by the Blue JD. Under four minutes. Evans clears. Peter Milliman wants a timeout. Down one, 3.38 to go. Well, if you're just joining us, Navy got here late tonight. They had a bus mishap coming out of the Naval Academy, had to uh, get a second bus, which ultimately started smoking and then broke out in fires. And so we pushed the start time back 30 minutes. They were slow starting. Sheehan Hopkins led six to one in the first quarter. And then Hopkins just kind of fell asleep and Navy came alive. It was the tale of different quarters. Hopkins held scoreless for over 33 minutes. Dane Swanson, number 28, has become a really hot shooter for this Navy team, come on strong the last three games. He started the scoring in that second quarter. Chipped in three for the night. Swanson, the big righty, going to be a Navy pilot. Navy team offensively playing a really strong second and third quarter. Navy D's been good all season long. Not great, but good. They got Jackson Bonnets, number eight on D. Lacalzi, solid. A.J. Marsh is going to be a star at the long pole, and I've been really impressed with the work of their three shorties today. Jack Norton, Justin Queen, and Chad Connolly have performed really well. Hopkins has 
two droughts. Joe Amplo's defense has held Hopkins scoreless for 22-41 and 19-21. Which Hopkins started out so strong. Started the game scoring six of 12 of their shots. Ready for a set piece off the timeout. If you're Navy. Melendez against the shorty, Jackson Peters. Peters digging in, holds his ground. Bauer against Marsh. Shot clock at 30. Angelus. He's quick. Got to be careful with Angelus on the perimeter. So slippery. His head's always up looking to pass, but he can score. Throwback Pesco. Righty rip. Tied up at nine. Beautifully drawn up. Pesco, seventh goal this season. You saw that March second game against Virginia. He had four goals and one assist. Angelus creates this. He's, he's a threat. He's their leading passer, but however, he can go to cage and score. Shifts the defense with his moves. All eyes are on him. Gets it to Pesco. Beautiful shot placement. That's that lever pass. Little lever pass, sees the double and just folds his hands over and Pesco goes fishing, catch and release, nine to nine. Avilas wins the draw. Navy's got an injured player down in the middle of the field. Officials need to blow the whistle. Justin Queen is in a lot of pain up at the 50. I didn't see how he went down, but obviously Amplo is fired up. Uh, Faith, Joe Amplo is, is, he is fired up. He felt his wingman, Justin Queen, was violated. 36, bottom of your screen. Oh, wow, he, he butt-ended him. Avilas, can we see that again? Can we see that again? That That is flagrant misconduct, a right-hand butt-end on a wing of a face-off. You talk about going over the line. Again, watch the right hand of number 10. Boom. That's illegal every day of the week. Piece 239 to go. We've had three ties. <laughs> Fans into it. Hopkins band has. Maybe gone home for the night. Spring break started today here on the Homewood campus. Bauer with the head of speed, right handed. Daily save, good rebound control inside from McGollum. Can Navy clear? They've got timeouts to work with, but they got to get the ball in the offensive quarter. Lacalle's the eye in the field. Hopkins is in a deep ride. They've dropped. Good pass by Daly, and Peters can run this to safety. That's a clutch play by the goalie, Dan Daly. Joe Amplo calls timeout, and Navy will set things up. After really strong second and third quarters for Navy, fourth quarter for Navy, they've had five turnovers, just two shots, and zero goals. 
This is a big possession, great time to take a timeout. And Daly's cleaned things up on his clear. That was a, a really smart, patient clear to get that ball. Gotta love the band adding to the tension. Hopkins defensive huddle around Jamison Kester. And then you see Dave Cottle, former head coach at Loyola and Maryland, who's now the offensive coordinator at the Naval Academy. Chet Gladsuck bringing him in when Mike Phipps left for the job at Maryland. Coach Cottle. Uh, Coach who's experienced wins on Homewood Field. Loyola beat Hopkins back in 99. Um, distinct memories of that game. In 2006, he took the Terps here. And Joe Walter scored five goals, beating the Blue Jays. Ken Amplo, Blake Miller, and, and Cottle engineer a, a play here, a scoring chance that'll give them the lead. Think it's about formations here, Sheen, or you think it's about people? Yeah, I think it's really just about people at this point. Navy struggled in this fourth quarter, scoring. I like Matt Haley with the ball. Hopkins goes to their invert zone. Skip pass is there for Haley. He's tied up really well. Swanson near side to Hewitt. Get our line open for a second. Smith crowbars him away from the goal. Haley's got the shorty. This is the matchup. Shot clock, 25. Arline fumbles the bad pass. Swanson from distance misses the net. No reset, 18 seconds to go. You better find 28. 15 to go for Arline. Left-handed lob pass. One more. Hewitt! Oh, he hit the corner! He hit the corner. Max Hewitt put that ball right on the money, and it ricocheted off the iron. Ken like, Hopkins clear now. Under a minute to go, we're tied up. That was the right pass for Swanson. Beautiful shot. Hopkins gets lucky with the pipe. Navy, an aggressive run, and it creates the turnover. They bumped up field. Bonnets left his man in the corner alone, but Hopkins fumbles the ball out of bounds. And I think Joe Ampo is going to call a timeout for Navy. Fourteenth turnover for Hopkins. Hopkins on the day, 20 of 23 clearing. Well, this is a scenario now if you're Navy off this timeout. Like, you, you want to draw up some offense, but I've seen this happen so many times where you forget about the clear. You, you better focus on the clear first. Handle the ball down the field. Get it, get it safely over, yeah. That was a Blue Jay timeout. Check that. And that's important to note because now if Navy gets the ball, successful, clear, they can use their timeout to diagram something. So you, you got to think that if you're Joe Ample, you spent the majority of time right there. You're just worried about the clear. Let's get it in that offensive box, and I will call timeout. Looking Coach Amblo, a member of the uh, Team USA coaching staff last summer under John Donowski. Spent some time with Coach Amblo and that group in San Diego. Pete Milliman giving that gum a workout tonight. This is one Hopkins needs if they want to stay in the top 10. Straight up ride. Hopkins threatening to bump up field. The bounce pass by Daly. Just a great catch by Peters. Oh my gosh. And now Amplo calls timeout. Dan Daly has been throwing short hops all day. 
luckily they bounced the right direction. The ball has bounced Navy's way with a couple of those clears. This was that was a great catch. You're running in the middle of the field and someone short hops you like that. This is an amazing the, catch. The pressure's on. Especially on the clear, you're not expecting that. You're expecting the ball to, to hit you in your stick, and it just gets caught at the top. It's really wow. odd coming out of, the, of Daly's stick. Not even a short hop. That's the hard one. That's the middle hop. And he not only catches it and then seamlessly is able to make a pass. What a play by Jackson Peters, senior from Darien, Connecticut. Marine Corps ground is in his near future. Went on one, win. This season's been like no other that I've ever seen, Gene. Every, any given week, the upset has been unreal. I mean, this is a game, especially the way this first quarter started, it looked like Hopkins was gonna run away with it. This game is, I would say, way more important for Navy to win than it is for Hopkins to win. It's not good for Hopkins, just in terms of all the high hopes and how well they've been playing. This, if Navy could pull this off, it would change the trajectory of their season, big time. High quality play we've seen in 2024. Playmaking, drama. Swanson flips to our line. They cut left handed. It's Tolker. He misses the mark. Bolster with Navy. Swanson couldn't find it. Hopkins has got time for one more push. Long pass to Jaronski. They're going to have a shot here. Oh, and it goes over Angels' head. Are you kidding me? Nice set play by Navy. Tolker got the look. He misses the low post. And then the rebound comes up to Johns Hopkins. Angelus was going to take a shot at it. He was open. This is a great set play where you got Tolker coming on a left handed curl. Now watch this beautiful job. An excellent ground ball pickup. Patrick Dees, it gets downfield, and then this pass just sails a little too wide, too high. Can't handle it. Angelus is going to be wide open if that pass was on the money. Bonnet slips. Jackson Bonnet's the point man of the fast break, slips. Angelus is either going to stare that one down or have one more. I think at that point, if he had caught it, he would have had like three seconds left on the shot clock. Plenty of time to set his feet. We got extra time on a Friday night. Team who scores first wins. Face-offs. Navy's got the, a little bit of a slight edge. 12 of 22. Hopkins went into overtime in their season opening loss against Denver. They went into that overtime period down a man on a two-minute non-releasable call. Blue Jays have done a great job tonight staying out of the penalty box. It's been an issue for them. No penalties tonight for Hopkins. This is Navy's first foray into extra time this season. Zach Hayashi for Navy, 20 in blue. Tyler Dunn for Johns Hopkins, the senior. These two guys go back to the high school level. Dunn from Calvert Hall, Hayashi from McDonough. Both scrappy, both counter guys. Both super balanced and quick on their feet. Navy's plus two in this face-off department, but this is the only one that matters. Hayashi wins the draw. Navy's going to have transition here. Marsh is a threat to his right. Our line wide. Hayashi has a goal. Love that he passed it off there. That was a smart play. Navy misses the net from mid-range. Both teams are given a timeout here in extra time. 
Hewitt covered by Martin. Draws the double quickly. Back up top for Dane Swanson. Played a strong game. Mac Haley. Roll back. Hewitt got leverage. Does it count? Does it count? It counts! Navy wins! Check that. Check that. Goal is good. I believe the officials are going to look this one over. They should. They're going to go to replay. This is why we have replay. Their call was goal is good. And now to confirm, they're going to take a look at the videotape. You can feel the nerves on the Hopkins sideline right now. Officials reviewing this. Let's take a look. I don't see any crease violation. He does not land in the goal yeah, mouth. The question, Sheen, is when does the ball go in the net? Because we don't really see the net ripple. Okay, that toe is not in. There's nothing to confirm that. The ball is now in the net, and I think he lands. I think this goal will be confirmed as a good goal. What a play. Looks like a goal from our angle that we're seeing. Max Hewitt, the senior, gets to the inside. Nothing there, right? Do you see anything that says he landed in the crease before that goal? No. Well, he's definitely not in the goal mouth. I think it's a good goal. I think it's a good goal. Don't see that toe. There's nothing to confirm that toe. The right knee, does the right knee bump before the ball go in across the goal line? Again, watch the right knee, right? Down. I think it's a goal. It's a goal. Navy has done it. Navy has done it. The celebration got a little delayed with that review. 44 seconds into overtime. Hewitt, who scored four goals, and the game winner when they beat Johns Hopkins in 2022 gets the game winner in overtime. Send a fourth bus up to Baltimore. Navy's going back to Annapolis with a W. Max Hewitt, you know, I think he just liked the fact that, that he had a lot of space to work with here, Sheehan. Hopkins didn't show that they were in the mood to double him. And I think he sensed that. He was well covered. Right here, he's well covered, but he says, you know what? There's not a double presenting itself. I'm, I'm gonna go for it. Well, it was a little deceptive. It almost looked like he was gonna go behind the cage, take it around to reset up. Instead, he saw that little bit of room to get to the center of the field. That's a big W. Huge win for Navy. They improved to four and three. Hopkins suddenly now has lost back-to-back -back games, but this is the type of win with this inconsistent Navy team that can create growth, confidence, and belief as they dive deeper into their Patriot League schedule. Dan Daly, their goalie, was outstanding. Mr. Bounce Pass himself. Dane Swanson, I thought, took this game over in the second quarter. Hewitt was outstanding when it counted. The defense, 93rd edition of this series, Sheen. It was a pleasure. These teams always go at it, man. This is great. That was fun, and that's what you call a team win. This historical rivalry, Navy has now won back-to-back -back games in this series here at Homewood Field. The mids, 10 to 9. Oh, here it comes.